going to pick up right where we left off in the last video and we were discussing the options that you can use with the date picker widget. And one thing you may want to do is you may not want to allow your users to go as far back as they want in the past. Obviously we don't want them moving back to Roman times. So you can prevent that by using the minimum date property. And you can see that's what we put here, just min date. Remember, it's case sensitive, so you need a capital D here. Then we use the new date that we want to specify by using the new keyword. And actually, this is the format that we have to use. We put the year first, then the month, and then the day. And, and it has to go inside parenthesis. Now, you may think that this actually equates to November. It actually does not. Because as we know, most computers start with zero. So this 11 actually equates to December. And 10 would equate to November, and so on and so on. So hopefully now, this will prevent the user from going any farther back than December 25th, 2014. So let's go ahead and refresh our page. And let's start moving back in time. And look, we can go back no further. We can only select December 25th, which is what we wanted. Now, if you want to do the opposite of this, you can as well. You just use the max date property. So let's go ahead and just switch this to max. And let's actually put this way out in the future. We'll say 2019. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll refresh our page and let's start moving ahead. And hopefully it stops us in 2019, December 2019. And it did. So everything is working perfectly. Now we can also add a nice button panel to the bottom of the calendar. And the property is the show button panel which is right here. And we just set that to true. So let's go ahead and refresh our page. And there you can see we've got these nice buttons now. Now, what if you wanna alter the text of these? Well, let's go ahead and alter the text of the done button. So the property we use for that is close text. And then we just put the text that we want for that button. And let's just do something like close calendar. So we'll see what we get here. And there you can see, we've got our own customized text. Now you can also change the text for the today button. And the property for that is current text. And we'll change the text to something more relevant. And whoops, gotta get rid of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we get here. And there you can see, we changed the text of the first button. So that's how that works. Now, what if you wanted to add a suffix onto here? For instance, maybe you wanted to add CE, or you can add BC. Let's add BC, actually. So to do that, we add the years suffix property, which is right here. And then we can go ahead and add a suffix. And we do that in quotes again. Now, you'll want to put a space here, because if we don't, it'll appear right next to the six, and we don't want that. And let's just put in BC here. So maybe you were making a calendar, that people could go back in time to select an event in ancient times. So let's go ahead and see what we get. And there you can see, we've got our suffix and you can put any type of suffix you want. You could make this BCE, CE, AD, whatever you want. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at the tooltip widget. See you guys then.